Hey, buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Gilman is the name and Hearthstone is the game. And these are the five ways to fix Lillian Voss, the rogue legendary from Knights of the Frozen Throne. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably don't really think actively or at least regularly that Lillian Voss actually needs to be fixed. I thought she was a pretty harmless card, perhaps not the most popular card in Frozen Throne, but just seemed like, you know, a chill Wendy Yeti with a cool, interesting effect. But uh, while researching some other videos and going through the data on hsreplay.net, I saw that Lillian Voss actually has the third lowest win rate of all legendary cards in Knights of the Frozen Throne for decks in which she's played, putting her above only Blood Queen Lanathel and Murabi. But the really, really interesting interaction in those statistics that I noticed is that essentially that means all three of those cards are just simply being played in bad decks. Freeze Shaman doesn't really work. Discard Warlock doesn't really work. Spell, cheap spell synergy decks with, you know, Razor Petals and stuff doesn't really work with Lillian Voss. But the main distinction is that all of those decks have bad win rates, but in both Discard Warlock and Freeze Shaman, the win rates go up when you play Murabi and Blood Queen Lanathel, respectively. They make the decks slightly better. Playing Blood Queen Lanathel adds a couple points to your win percentage. She's a solid card in Discord Warlock. Murabi adds a couple points to your win percentage. He's a solid card within Free Shaman. Clearly bad decks, but still standout cards within those decks. When you look at Lillian Voss, the third worst legendary in that set, the win rate drops in decks in Lillian Voss from 44.9% down to 38.5% or a net loss of more than 6% when Lillian Voss is played. In other words, she takes a bad deck and she makes it drastically worse. 6% is an enormous hit to your win rate. So Lillian Voss is not just bad, a part of a bad archetype like those other cards. She's potentially one of the worst cards within that archetype. So this battle cry is apparently not just, you know, chill and yeti with upside, but it's actually actively hurting your chances to win the game. It's making your deck just unbelievably worse when you play Lillian Voss. Now, of course, the idea is replace those cheap backstabs and razor pedals and counterfeit coins and coins and turn them into ultimate infestations, right? That's the dream. That's the idea. But... At the end of the day, random spells are exactly that. They're random. The class you're playing against is more or less random, minus, you know, maybe Druid. And a lot of the times the spells that Lillian Voss gives you, since they're at random costs, they do random things that don't even necessarily work at all, like Shield Slam, for instance, might be totally useless. There's a thousand examples like that. And, you know, they're, they're random quality as well, so it's not always ultimate infestation. Sometimes it's just junk spells that Druid has access to, like Naturalize, for instance. You may never want to use a Naturalize if your opponent needs cards, just matchup dependent sorts of things. So, it's actually a big risk to run Lillian Voss in her battle cry. So, I wanted to propose a handful of different ways that I've identified that you could change Lillian Voss's battle cry. Just make some small tweaks to how this effect works. And you would essentially either give her additional tempo advantages through her battle cry, make the spells less random, uh, don't sacrifice your spells in the meantime. Just some different ways to mitigate the risk of Lillian Voss and potentially increase the upside of playing her so that she's not so actively terrible. So let's go ahead and jump into this list of my five fixes for the card. Probably nobody realized needs fixing, but it seems like actually in fact it's one of the worst cards in Knights of the Frozen Throne. So up first is a pretty simple change to the card itself. Almost everything's exactly the same, the battle cry remains the same, but one additional sentence is added there at the end, and that is that you can reduce the cost of the spells that get put into your hand by two mana. So essentially not only are you getting random spells, but you're getting a tempo advantage alongside them. So even if they're lower quality on average, they're so much cheaper that they still end up being better cards than you otherwise might expect. So, you know, even if you get Web Weave instead of Ultimate Infestation, you know, Web Weave is not that exciting at its true mana cost, but if it's a couple mana cheaper, suddenly that becomes a considerably better spell to actually utilize. And, of course, you think of multiple examples where 
a two mana cheaper spell that wasn't a great spell in and of itself becomes really, really good when its cost is reduced by two. It's just two Emperor Thoris on ticks. Can open up all kinds of combo space as well. You can probably pull off some shenanigans you otherwise couldn't do. It's that turn eight Innervate Ultimate Infestation all over again, right? That would be an incredible play if Lillian Voss enabled that sort of thing. So essentially, just if you're going to have these random spells pass back to you, you don't know their quality on average, at least make them cheaper so that you can increase the ability to use them and push them out quicker and give Lillian Voss some tempo advantages, not just essentially what is sort of a value or potential upside advantage, but also some extra speed in the game, in mid-game in particular, which is a place that Rogue can sometimes struggle. And this also just works with other, you know, thief-style cards that we've seen, like Ethereal Peddler, uh, even Renounce Darkness has a cost reduction built in, so clearly those things make sense for both Rogue and Hearthstone in general, because random stuff's not as good as chosen stuff, it needs that cost reduction to remain viable. And that's exactly what this updated version of the card would provide. So moving on to my next suggestion, this is a similar one in some ways because it's another one that reduces the randomness of the spells you get and gives you a little bit more control and finesse over the spells. And that's essentially that uh, instead of just getting a random spell added back into your hand and replacing it, instead I think you should be able to discover the spell. And real quickly, uh, the wording on this card, I actually didn't write it completely correctly. I still intend these discovered spells to replace the spells in your hand. It's not just discovering them and adding them to your hand. I kind of left out the replace part here in the card text. Forgive me as I made this custom card. Uh, but the idea is that you discover a spell that would replace one of the spells in your hand. So if you had four spells in your hand, essentially you'd pull up four discover effects, you know, kind of like you're building a Kazakus potion where you discover the first one and then another one comes up. You discover the second one, essentially. And then you have four unique spells. And if you want, you can choose four ultimate infestations. If you want, you can choose a couple swipes and a couple in ultimate infestations. Whatever the case may be, this just gives you a little bit more fine-tuning over the spells spells that you get back. So it actually, you know, you're sacrificing your stuff, of course, that you know and you pick to work with your deck, but you're sacrificing it. Maybe you want burst damage. Maybe you want defensive utility. Maybe you want board clears. Whatever the case, you can pick a swath of different things. You can go all in on one particular strategy, but as long as you have spells in hand, you're going to be able to generate a ton of extra value. And this is a really strong effect. Some might say, in fact, that this is too powerful. Hey, maybe so. I don't know. We'd have to see, but it's certainly better than what we have with Lillian Voss right now, and I'd rather design something to be just a tad too strong in a class that's currently rather weak. Rogue is not finding a ton of success right now, so this could be the kind of card that pushes them over the edge and gives them a really value bomb kind of legendary that they don't really have right now. Most of their legendaries uh, are more tempo-oriented than... Uh, than value oriented, so Lillian Voss would add back. So, you know, just getting a Primordial Glyph, essentially, although it wouldn't reduce the cost, and just picking spells from your opponent could go a long way, and it would certainly be better against some classes than others, so that'd be an interesting shakeup in the meta, but it's still something that I'd like to see and would clearly uh, make this a lot stronger than just random effects. As we move on to my third fix, uh, this one I'm going to introduce a little bit of a tweak to how the Lillian Voss interaction could work. And I think there are some interesting design opportunities here if you base her effect on cards in your opponent's hand, not just cards in your hand. So for instance, with this third one, you could swap the spells in your hand with random spells from your opponent's hand. And this is yet another one that might be just a tad overpowered. I'd have to see this in practice, but again, Rogue needs good cards. But essentially here, so if you had, you know, a couple backstabs, a couple razor petals, you'd take your backstabs and razor petals and you'd put them in your opponent's hand and you would take four random spells from their hand and add them back to your hand. So if they only had two spells in hand, you'd just copy the two spells they had and you'd kind of be taking a small risk because you'd put four cards in their hand and you'd only gain two back, but maybe you gain a swipe and an ultimate infestation and you just hand them a couple, couple razor petals. So you essentially gain a huge advantage because you know you're giving them junk and it's much more likely that you get advantageous cards from them. But, you know, there is some risk against, for instance, Pirate Warrior Lillian Voss would probably be absolute junk. She wouldn't do anything because that's a super minion-based dex. And there are a lot of minion-based decks in Hearthstone right now, and foreseeable future there should be even more. So this would become a card that works really well in certain metas and has some incredibly powerful applications there. I mean, imagine playing against a freeze mage and stealing their ice block and giving them a backstab. They'd be like, oh my god, seriously? You just took my ice block insta-concede. Playing it against Pirate Warrior, 
It's just a Chillman Yeti. So I like that risk-reward balance is really cool there. The implications across various metas is really neat. And I just think the effect is awesome. You kind of reward yourself and punish your opponent for an interaction that we've never seen in Hearthstone before. Now, I don't know that Blizzard would do this. They typically don't like to interfere with your opponent's stuff all that much. They've started to break new ground there a little bit with some of the uh, Death Knight cards and with like Gnome Feratu and Dirty Rat and handful of cards in the last few expansions have started to steal or you know uh ruin your opponent's combos and and some of their resources in hand and disrupt their plans so i don't think this would be too far out of line in that regard i'm not sure blizzard would be willing to go quite this far but i still would like to see this effect in action i think it'd be a really fun card that would be very powerful but only some of the time and that's a pretty cool space for hearthstone to be in so i'd like to see this change for lillian boss and then as I move into my fourth card, this is another one that's based upon your opponent's hand and less upon your own hand. Uh, just operates a little bit differently than the previous one. In this case, you would just add a spell to your hand, a random spell from your opponent's class to your hand for every spell that they had. So it wouldn't be a swap mechanic here, essentially, and it wouldn't disrupt your opponent's resources, but it would still really reward you for your opponent running a lot of spells. And this could become a ridiculous card draw engine which rogue historically has been very successful with and they can draw a lot of cards they can do some pretty crazy things so you remove some of the downside of sacrificing your own spells here and you also remove a lot of the deck building challenges of lillian with lillian voss in this particular example because you don't have to run cheap spells it doesn't matter how many spells you have so this becomes a much more flexible general utility kind of legendary which i think would be nice instead of shoehorning her into a specific deck suddenly lillian voss Makes sense in a lot of different decks, and uh, she's just a card draw card. Sometimes you might only get one random spell against the Paladin who has Spike Ridge Steed. Other times you might be playing a uh, Razakis Priest, and you'll get six spells, and you'll burn a couple, and you'll burn your next card, but you're thrilled because you're still getting a lot of Priest cards and typical value generation that changes the shape of that matchup. Maybe you get some greater healing potions to survive against the Shadow Reaper, Ando, and Onslaught, so on and so forth. So... I just think this is a cool interaction and making her a card draw card instead of a card swap card changes a lot of how she works and the kinds of decks she could fit into and I think on average makes her a drastically better card which is what we need for Rogue and I'd hate to see a character like Lillian Voss lost to a card that's uh, too weak and too niche and this would avoid that trap. And then finally for my fifth fix this is another one that changes the direction of Lillian Voss a little bit. But for this one, instead of just getting spells in your hand and it being some sort of card generation or card draw mechanic, what if instead Lillian Voss uh, just immediately cast those spells? So essentially we turn Lillian Voss into a little miniature yogg Saron or Tortolan Primalist or Servant of yogg Saron, whatever you want to call her. Uh, essentially you'd have sort of a controlled yogg Saron effect, a limited yogg Saron effect. So instead of just being every random card from every class, it would only cast random spells from your opponent's class. So for instance, if you knew you were playing Priest, this probably works out r fairly well for you most of the time. You know, you get Thought Steals and Mind Visions and Power Word Shields aren't too bad. There's a lot of just, you know, single-use advantageous spells for Priest. Against other classes, it would have a much higher likelihood to backfire against Mage, for instance. You might not be thrilled if you Fireball or Pyroblast your own face a couple times, but... With the way this works, and the way you can kind of fine-tune how many spells are in your hand, and the class you're playing against is a controllable effect as well, or at least predictable effect, you know what's going to happen. You know you're playing Rogue, or Priest, or Mage, and you understand the risks inherent to each of those classes, unlike with Yogg, where you just throw everything up in there and you say, I don't care, well, let's see what happens. This would at least give you some ability to understand what's likely to happen, and that means you have decision-making power, you have knowledge to base your play upon, so... Maybe you just want to chill with Yeti sometimes, and you wait, and you empty your hand, and you play Lillian Voss as a chill with Yeti. Maybe other times you're playing against Priest, and you like the potential high roll that Lillian Voss could provide with five or six spells in hand, and you play your little mini Yonkseron. But at least you have the ability to decide, and still, this makes Lillian Voss a much stronger potential on-board tempo kind of play, because you're getting the value back instantly. You don't have to spend the mana on the spells once she adds them to your hand, so she's not nearly as slow. Right now, Lillian Voss is just a chill with Yeti, usually for four or five turns. It takes a long time to get that value back. In this case, she's doing something immediately. You're not sacrificing your own spells, so she fits in a wider variety of decks. 
You don't have to build around her quite so hard. And uh, I just like the idea of her being sort of a mini Yogg-Saron, specifically available to Rogue, but probably a better Yogg-Saron in a lot of ways that can still do some crazy things and provide big swings, uh, but without as much risk is inherent to Yogg-Saron. So this would be another really positive change for Lillian Voss in my mind. And there you go, guys. Those are my five fixes for Lillian Voss, the card nobody really realized needed to be fixed. Uh, I think she's fairly bad. I haven't had any success with her myself in the few attempts I've played her. I don't see anybody testing her out on the ranked ladder. And as I mentioned, the raw data suggests she's one of the worst cards to play in Knights of the Frozen Throne. She just really hurts your chances. She backfires, apparently, far more often than she ever succeeds. And to me, I hate to see legendary cards go to waste. Somebody gets this in their pack. Somebody gets stuck with this card and doesn't have any way to play her. So, especially because, you know, if you want to try to play her, you have to build a really narrow deck. So it forces people down really tough paths with crafting decisions, costs them a ton of dust, loses them the opportunity to play a fun legendary in a class they might enjoy. So that's all bad for Hearthstone. Let's increase the general use of this card so you can run her in more decks. Let's make her a little bit stronger so she can actually be played and be a reasonable card for people to keep. And I think a lot more people would be happy in Hearthstone. Not to mention Rogue as a class that needs a little help right now could get stronger too. So all that said, I'm sure you guys have some thoughts on this video. Some of you will think I'm crazy. Some of you will think these effects are overpowered. Cool. Share those takes. I want to hear it. Tell me why I'm wrong. That's always fun for me to see what you guys have to say on all these uh, design, design decisions and uh, thought processes. So leave those in the comments below. But until then, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, game on.